All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my good friend Amanda Marcotte. Amanda is an author, a writer, a blogger. She writes regularly for Slate, Alternate, RH Reality Check, and Pandagon at Raw Story. You can find all of that on her Twitter, which is Amanda Marcotte. Amanda, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks for having me. All right, so Amanda, you recently wrote a piece at Alternet about how the religious right, who consistently says they are in favor of religious freedom, they're very adamant on this, we need religious freedom, uh, is actually having that uh, principle put to the test by a group of Satanists. Tell us all about it. Well, I mean, it's it's actually kind of going on around the country. Uh, Multiple Satanists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's kind of two groups. There's the Satanic Temple in New York, which um, does these sort of targeted and extremely hilarious strikes um, <laughs> against Christians who are using religious freedom as an excuse to have government endorsement of religion going on. So, for instance, um, in Oklahoma, they put a Ten Commandments monument out on the State House lawn, and the argument was, um, that is not an endorsement of religion because um, it's about history or some other gobbledygook. And, like, <laughs> basically that religious freedom also requires the government, um, you know, letting people who are religious put these sort of things out. So it's kind of a twofer, and, and let's just ignore the internal contradictions there, right? Right. Um, so the Satanists... Satanic Temple in New York decided to test this by designing by far the coolest, almost hilarious statue ever <laughs> <laughs> and demanding that they get equal representation on the lawn by getting the Satanic uh, statue put on the lawn at Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma at the Oklahoma State Legislature. Now, Oklahoma, I have to remind you, is just not like it is. <laughs> There's not a there's a lot of people that are kind of provincial, I would say, in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> I say this with love. I have family that lives there, you know. But yeah, I, I'm from Nebraska, don't... so so I, I know Oklahoma pretty well. Yeah, they just don't get out much, and so right. like they don't realize they're being <laughs> trolled. They're <laughs> they're just completely panicking and freaking out, and you know, the governor of Oklahoma is just pandering to that sort of religious right, I don't get out much mentality, and, <laughs> and saying, you know, just demagoguing against them. And it's hilarious because what it does is to outsiders, it basically kills any in, any suggestion that they were arguing in good faith when they put that <laughs> Ten Commandments monument out on the lawn. And the Satanic Temple's done a, a similar thing in Florida where the school started to allow Christian groups to distribute Bibles and Christian handbooks on school property. Now, by doing that, they basically triggered a Supreme Court like ruling that said, if you do that, you have to let every other group do similar things. And so an atheist group took advantage and the school just basically like reluctantly let them do that because they knew they couldn't without getting sued. But now the Satanic Temple, which I think is going to be a much harder sell, <laughs> right. has decided to jump in, and they demand that they can distribute coloring books. <laughs> and on I, I, I see this. This is these are little Satanic coloring books, and they're adorable. They're just this adorable little drawings about about what it means to be a Satanist. Yeah, and just like the the, the statue in Oklahoma is a statue of Baphomet, the the go headed <laughs> god. Making like I think a peace sign while sitting there with the Dorian children looking at him. So like they really, they really parody well, kind of the way that like Christian art is relies on children and and sentimentality and cuteness to sort of get its message across. Right. Um, except for Satanism. I mean. <laughs> So that, kind of, it, what's, what's what's so funny is how how serious like the the religious right takes this stuff. Like I, I live in Boston, and not that long ago there was going to be a, a satanic mass at Harvard in Cambridge, and people flipped out over it too. It's just like they just went nuts over the fact that that they were actually going to be having this. They went they went crazy. 
Yeah, even so, like a satanic mass, if you've ever seen pictures of one, first of all, they're always just super tongue in cheek. I mean, I think some people right. take it seriously, but by and large, even the ones who take it very seriously don't actually believe that there's a Satan and that they worship him. <laughs> you know, right. it's more like a philosophical desire. It's it's more of a punk rock mentality, just, you know, trolling <laughs> people for the hell of it. Right. And, and the funny thing is they could make this all go away by allowing themselves to be trolled, like just not, not allowing themselves to be trolled, you know, just letting it happen. But mm-hmm. of course they panic. <laughs> Well, and also the fact that that this could all go away if they didn't demand to have all these government resources to actually uh, help them establish their religion. That is actually the main point of this whole thing, is that we are supposed to have freedom of religion here, and you have these religious religious white groups who want to put, they want to put, uh, they want to have God in schools, they want to put a monument to the Ten Commandments on the courthouse steps, and, and, and you know, because they do that, they, they, they leave themselves open to, you know, goofy attacks acts like this, which again, I, I find pretty amusing. But again, if they would just like be religious on their own and just have their religion in their churches and in their normal lives, instead of having to force it on the rest of the community, they wouldn't be having this problem in any way, shape or form. Exactly. And I, I it, it's fascinating to me because almost to the last one, the religious right that push is trying to sort of use the government to endorse their faith. Um, to the last one, I think they would declare themselves to be not only patriots, but bigger patriots than the liberals that are, you know, that are for separation <laughs> of church and state. And, you know, it's so obviously false. Um, they so obviously hate and resent our actual history as a country, which is a country that is secular, a country yeah. that respects actual freedom of religion, that has strong separation between church and state and was intended to be that from the beginning, you know, that like, there's just like, for instance, uh, (laughs) you know, um, the 10 commandments thing on the lawn is really interesting because like, so one of the ways that the religious right sort of tries to reconcile their supposed patriotism with their actual factual hatred and resentment of our American history and American (laughs) values, um, uh, is to just lie and say right. that actually our American history and American values have always been about um, our specific faith. Like they use, they flaunt the word Judeo Christian around a lot as if that's a meaningful phrase and argue that actually from every step of the way, our government has been influenced by the Bible and Christian principles. And some of the stretches they make to get this argument working um, are kind of comical. And the Ten Commandments issue is one. So literally, and I'm not kidding, the argument for Ten Commandments being a historical artifact instead (laughs) of a religious endorsement is that it influenced the founders Uh. because it's laws and they also wrote laws. Oh, (laughs) 